Yes. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Will the secretary call the roll? President Hill. Here. Vice President Ackman is not present. Director Falls. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Director Smalley. Here. And Director Ackman informed me that she had a business meeting that ran late and was going to be delayed for this closed session. Okay. Um, and here she is. <laughs> okay, are there any changes to the closed session agenda? Are there any oral communications regarding items of the closed session? Seeing none in both cases, um, we should adjourn to closed session at this time. Okay, it is 5.30 and it's time to get started. Pardon? 6.30. 6.30, sorry. It's 6.30, time to get started. Uh, so I will call to order this meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Holly, will you please call the roll? President Hill. Present. Vice President Ackman. Present. Director Falls. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Okay. Check my agenda here. We've got a roll call. Okay, we did have a closed session. We have nothing to report out from the closed session. So, moving on here. Changes to the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda for this evening's meeting? Seeing none, oral communications. Uh, this portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Let me address the board of directors at this time. Presentations may not exceed three minutes in length and you may speak only once during this period. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda no action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communications be placed on a future agenda. We have two people that are attendees remotely that are, have their hand raised. It's Elaine Fresco and Jim Mosher. Okay, I don't see that here. So what am I missing? CTV, can you please promote Jeff Hill to a panelist? Can I show you? Can you pull up the bottom? Maybe, maybe I've got it here. Hit join this join panel. Join this panel. Okay. And so then I'll show you where you look. So if you click on participants, the little arrow next to participants. Yes. And then you'll see the hands raised. If you go over to attendees, you have to click on attendees. Attendees. There you go. And you can see the hands are raised. Okay. So um, do either of you two have a recording your address? Please. Sound and turn your sound off on your so computer. my name is Everett Downs. Uh, I live in Belton. Oh, it is and yeah. Service from folks have been there since uh, around 2019, maybe 99 or so. Um, as of that time, I was required to put a sprinkle system in my home, and because of that, I was required to put a one inch meter in my facility. Now it's just my wife and I and a dog that live there. And so our water usage is about the same as a typical resident in San Juan Valley. However, um, looking over the rates, right now we're only paying about $18 more per month for fixed charges than everybody else. And though I don't necessarily agree with that, that's um, 
acceptable. But and I'm, I'm not talking about a, you know, I, I'm not supposed to talk about the rate increase. Um, so I'm not directly uh, going towards that. However, I have to speak about it a little bit because looking at just the first year's increases, we'll be paying an extra $32 a month. Um, that's that's approximately 56% more for the fixed charges than every other resident that's having a five eighths or even a three quarter inch line. I don't believe that's fair. We have the one inch line, but it's not being used. We don't use it much for it. And it, there's no, what I was assuming is that there would be a difference on how much water you use as to more per, for per how you measure. But looking at it, other than unless you get a real heavy user, there's no difference. So again, if we're just using the rates and paying the rates for a resident, except for these added fees for no good reason, other than the county maybe put a one inch meter in there. Um, and so I, uh, I spoke with somebody at the office today and uh, I understand it can't be on the agenda today because you're already on your agenda. But I'm gonna request, I, I made what I'm saying here, I made seven copies. I didn't know how many people were gonna be here and what you want them. Uh, okay. Um, it has my contact information on it. But what I'm here to do today, I guess, is basically to request that uh, this becomes an agenda item that we can discuss in more detail at a future meeting. Because I think this may can be inequities. And the other part of this is that I discovered also that the people who lost homes here, they're going to be stuck with that same problem. Here they were living in a home, and all of a sudden they're going to have an extra $50, $60 if they pay for water for no other good reason other than there's a different size meter there. So there is an inequity. If somebody has a, a one inch meter for a reason, I understand that. But, you know, for, for usage reasons. But, um, so anyway, that's it's very simple. I, I think it's unfair. And I think it should be re-looked re at. Um, it's my understanding that this is a decision that's made by you folks, not the Board of Supervisors. At least that's what I've been read. Because I wouldn't take this over the Board of Supervisors if I don't think they have jurisdiction. You folks just said who pays what for the food. Anyway, that's my Thank you. Thank you for the time. Can, can I just respond? Any I'm sorry. Can I just respond? Yeah. Okay. I, I just wanted to let you know that there and and you know we can consider agendizing this, but there will be future meetings where we take up the rate increase discussion where it would be perfectly appropriate for you to come and participate. Um, we'll have a public hearing on this in February. I know there will be a public outreach meeting where you can learn more later this month. So so while we don't have it on this agenda, we are going to be taking up the rate increase discussion. Well, I understand that. I know that. Um, and actually the the inequity is already in place before you ever, even if you don't approve those rate increases. I'm already paying more than the average person for a retired couple who just drink water and take a bath. So, thank you. Thank but, you. Uh, I guess if you would consider putting it on agenda, I guess I would be glad that. Is that true? How does that work? Uh, I think that the we don't typically contact individuals about agenda items, but we are we we meet every two weeks, since our agendas always go up usually by the Monday before our meeting on the Thursday. So, you you would need to check and just make see when the item is agendized. But I would be curious, and Brian, I'm not expecting you to answer this tonight, but uh, why is the county requiring? I mean. I don't know why in your case that was required, but why is the county requiring one inch meters for certain, for fire service? You, you, need, you need a certain flow rate if there's sprinkler systems would ever go off. The kick yeah. out through a fire meter would get service. Got it. Okay, um, okay let's, let's move on. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Um, Elaine Fresco, do I have to click on this now? Or? No. Oh. Elaine, are you there? Oh, I do not. I do not see Elaine anymore. Oh, there she is. She's dropped out. Has she hand. been promoted to a panel? Oh, she dropped out. Now it's Jim Mosier. Yeah, Jim Mosier. You have a comment? Uh, can you hear me, Elaine? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Now you're back. Oh, yes. All right. Um, hi, everybody. I just have a quick item to discuss with you. I own a few um, rentals in the valley. And of course, I pay the water bills. And so I get all the water bills every month. But I'm also getting all the notices from SLVWD about the uh, rate increases, like the notice of public hearings. So I get 
all of those are not sent to my tenants. And I don't think I should be responsible for what am I supposed to do, scan them to them or go to their homes and deliver them or those should be going out to each individual address, not to the landlord or landlady uh, to uh, get that number of, of notices. Um, I, I assume you want everybody to know about these public hearings. And I, I can guarantee you that there are a lot of them that are not going out to the uh, people who rent. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. We'll look into that. Okay, Jim Mosier. I think, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, so I am speaking to alert ratepayers and the board and staff that the Friends of San Lorenzo Valley Water has prepared an extensive frequently asked questions document regarding uh, SLVWD's proposed rate, uh, new rate increase in rate structure. Our group reviewed the notice of, of Prop 18 public hearing that the district sent out, as well as the district's FAQs available on the website, and determined that they did not adequately address the district's current financial picture, the rationale for the rate increase and new rate structure and its impact on ratepayers. In particular, the materials do not show the impact of the proposed tiered rate structure on differing categories of ratepayers that rate that heavy water users in the summer months, those with large gardens and pools and other summer water uses will be experiencing much higher rate increases than others. Um, by using averages, you, uh, you underestimate the impact of, of those uh, with heavy use during the summer. And that was part of the intent uh, of doing the tiered rates uh, that we discussed in the Budget and Finance Committee. Our intent in doing these documents is to augment the district's materials and do not intend these as a criticism of either the board or staff. We recognize the intense pressure the district is facing with the departure of senior staff and the many challenges the staff is addressing with the multiple repairs and upgrades that are in process in addition to the rate study. Uh, the, the FAQs are available at our website, www.friendsofsanlorenzovalley.org in the hot topics, click. We would also like to encourage the, the board to put on the future agenda uh, an examination of the rate assistance program for uh, low income residents who are gonna have a hard time dealing with this rate increase. And uh, as per the letter that we submitted to the board uh, uh, in December, I uh, hope that you will uh, consider increasing that, uh, the uh, financial uh, benefits for low-income residents, uh, rate payers, uh, so that it will lessen the, uh, the adverse impact on, on those of us in the Valley who are facing uh, financial challenges, particularly uh, seniors in, with fixed incomes. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. We will look at your uh, materials and uh, respond as appropriate. Okay, moving on. Uh, unfinished business, we have none on the agenda. New business, uh, we have three items listed as new business. Comprehensive financial report for the fiscal year, Alta via pipeline replacement project, contract change orders, and board committee assignments. Um, so let's start with a comprehensive financial fiscal report. Uh, Brian, would uh, you care to present that for our staff? Sure. I'm um, going to go ahead and um, this report will be delivered by Heather uh, Ippoliti and her consultant who's prepared the uh, presentation so that together they'll be making the presentation for everybody. Thank, thank you, Brian. Good evening, board. I am Heather I. Paletti. I am um, the district's interim finance director. And tonight, um, the presentation will primarily be given by our uh, representative from our audit auditing firm, the FDEC and Brown LLP, Jonathan Abedesco. And um, your motion 
um, before you tonight is to approve the financial statements for fiscal year 22-23. And I do want to point out one typo in the report in the environmental impact section. Um, the proposed action is an administrative activity of the district, not a city. And with that brief introduction, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jonathan. Yeah, thanks, Heather, for that uh, nice introduction. And uh, regarding that uh, minor correction, we will make the change on the final uh, issued report. Thank you. Okay. So should I share my screen or somebody somebody will share uh, the screen? Um, Jonathan, if you could share your screen, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we are not seeing. Yeah, can everybody see my screen right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the uh, uh, San Lorenzo Valley um, financial statement presentation for fiscal year 23. So if uh, so here's the uh, professional guidance that we follow. So our audit process is governed by American Institute of C CPAs or Certified Public Accountants um, Auditing Standards. And we follow the federal and state requirements, especially when we audit your grants or grants that you receive from uh, for instance, I believe that in the past two years, you received uh, FEMA grants. So we ensure that uh, the district is uh, in compliance with uh, those uh, federal statutes or state requirements. So GAP or accepted accounting principles, we follow the uh, rules governed by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. So our audit process, um, it's uh, divided into two steps. The first phase is the uh, interim fieldwork, where we gain an understanding of the district's uh, control framework from receipts, disbursements, bank reconciliations, or your cash, and payroll. So with that said, once we understand your process, we... Uh, perform a test of your controls by selecting a handful of transactions. And uh, so far in those testings, uh, we did not find any uh, material um, deficiency or any uh, significant deficiency in those controls. So everything is um, operating as intended. So final field work, we, uh, that's the next phase of our audit where we obtain your trial balance um, and we audit the assets, liabilities, revenues, expense, and uh, net assets of the district. Also, uh, as part of our procedure, we also consider fraud in our, you know, when we do our audits. So keep in mind that we always have a professional skepticism mindset, meaning that this means that uh, when we are presented documents, we question them, review them, and we audit them. We don't just rely on what management uh, provides to us. And uh, lastly, we always do an interview of board and uh, management um, every year. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, their responses are pretty much on point, and uh, we don't have any uh, questions. Okay, as a culmination of all this uh, process, so on page one of your report or page 15 of your board packet, we have uh, issued a clean opinion where your financial statements are in accordance with U.S. generally accepted accounting principles. 
Also in your board packet, I believe you have the uh, management report. So the management report just uh, summarizes our communication with the board in terms of uh, in management that uh, we don't have any difficulties encountered when we perform the audit. There were no disagreements with management and uh, we did not consult with outside CPAs. So again, uh, for this year's audit, as I mentioned a while ago, when we had performed your control, understanding of your controls and uh, testing of your controls, we did not find any uh, material weakness or any uh, significant deficiencies in your control processes. So kudos to management, to district staff. Uh, you all did a great job. Okay, so on page um, um, 20 of your board packet, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you can see this table. So this table shows you the uh, financial position or or the balance sheet, which is equivalent to the private sectors. So with this said, so your current assets, it uh, decreased by uh, $2.5 million. The reason being is that uh, the district had several um, capital projects during the year, which I believe includes the uh, Alta Via main project and the uh, Redwood Tank project which we, yeah, where the costs spent was shifted as part of the uh, increase and um, as part of the increase in your capital assets. Um, your um, current liabilities, it uh, increased by uh, $2 million due to uh, timing of payments of uh, accounts payable, which can be attributed to the uh, capital projects you have during the year. Your non-current liabilities, it uh, increased by close to $1.9 million. So the reason, the reason behind the increase was um, your net pension liability from CalPERS increased as compared to the prior year. So the reason behind the increase was um, there was a uh, investment uh, loss incurred by CalPERS in the prior year, which was the basis of their uh, report. Uh, and uh, moving, uh, do you have any questions so far on this uh, page? Should I uh, continue? Please do. Okay. So your total revenues, it um, increased by $614,000. The primary reason behind the increase was um, your non-operating revenues, which consist consisted of your um, investment returns being up by approximately uh, $550,000 and your property taxes increasing by $60,000 compared to the prior year. Your um, operating revenue or your water sales is uh, pretty much consistent during the year it uh, just decreased by a small amount due to the uh, state drought mandate in the prior year. Sorry, in the current year, sorry. Um, your total expense, uh, it increased by $440,000, which can be um, attributed to um, your personal costs. Yeah, your personal costs increasing your um, investment in JPA from the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency um, increasing as well. Those are the two fa main factors why um, it has a jump, okay? So in summary, the district received an unmodified or clean opinion your net position, it increased by uh, $2.8 million. 
your total revenues it increased by six hundred thousand dollars as i mentioned a while ago due to investment return and property taxes increasing and your total expense it increased by four hundred forty thousand dollars due to uh personnel costs change in investment in jpa and uh, some capital asset disposals during the year. And uh, that concludes my uh, presentation. So any questions that uh, the board may have on the report or any public members that had some questions? Okay, so I will walk through the board here and ask each of you if you have questions. Bob, I'll start with you. I have no questions, but I have comments. So we could do those later. That's fine. Yeah. We'll do, comments. we'll do questions and comments. Okay. Because I don't want to hold him up because my comments aren't related to what he is here for. Keep in mind here that what's on the table is whether or not the report is an accurate representation of what's going on. So uh, it's, it's the report yeah. and everything that is in it. Yes. The comments I have, we don't need him for to be here for okay. this. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Gail, do you well, have questions? I, I, like Bob, it's kind of both things. But let me just point out uh, an additional error I found on um, page um, 10 or 25 of the agenda where they refer to the um, Boulder Creek fire as being one of the conditions affecting financial position. And um, obviously that should be the CZU fire. Um, and in addition, um, it seems to me that can, can have, whoever is speaking out there, um, please mute themselves. It's hard to, um, and under that same category, um, there's no mention of the uh, damages that were caused by the 2022-23 winter storms, which given that that was on the order of $5 million, that should also be listed as something that is a condition affecting the financial position. So I, I think those inaccuracies should be corrected before we uh, accept the report. Okay. Um, another question I have, and this is, I asked this last year and I didn't get a, a, a response that I really understood is why do we refer to the uh, annual fee that we pay to Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency as an investment? It is not an investment. We're not um, constructing capital equipment. It is, it is a flat out operating expense. And to call it anything else seems to me um, is kind of misleading because basically what we're paying for is uh, the staff that runs it, some of the monitoring and things that go on. And so I, I, I just wanna understand why, again, I, this happened last year. I was told by the staff that they would look into it to see why that was. And because of staff changes, maybe that didn't happen, but um, perhaps somebody could explain that to me. Okay, so I will, uh, I will answer that, uh, Director. So the reason behind uh, the treatment is uh, per um, governmental accounting standards, any um, interest that uh, an agency has with another agency jointly with um, other entities are viewed as um, an investment. It's just an accounting treatment. And uh, I hear your concerns about uh, that it's just an expense. But uh, per um, accepted accounting principles, it should be treated um, this way. May I offer a suggestion? Mm -hmm. There is a really good statistical section that we do as an agency. It's, I think, one of the best things that we've done. I don't see any reason why you couldn't have a little bit in the statistical section, which is meant to be supplementary information, that says, Explain that. even though from accounting purposes, it's this way, it really is this. And explain a little bit more about what Santa Margarita is. Yeah, and I, I think the other thing is, I, I can't imagine anybody reading this knew what the GPA meant. Yes. Sure. Uh, people know what Santa Margarita Groundwater Association agency means. And yep. so that that's another reason to do it, Bob suggested, so that people understand what 
what this yes. so-called investment is in. Yes. And uh, also on uh, regarding the explanation of the uh, investment in JPA, that is explained on uh, page um, 42 or page 26 of the audit report under note, note, note of three. Okay. Um, anything else I have to ask is probably best asked of this, our staff. Okay. Thank you. Jamie? Um, can you tell me uh, how many years have we been conducting a CAFR audit? How many years worth of audits do we have? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, your question was uh, how many years are we uh, conducting a uh, CAFR audit? Yeah. Uh, with our, yeah, with our firm? Well, I, I, not just with your firm. I don't know if we used a different firm prior, but I'm just wondering how many years of, of these audits we have available. You mean how many annual reports we've done? I, I don't, yeah, we, I don't think that we have been doing CAFR um, audits though for the entire course of our history. And so I'm trying to get a sense of I, how many years worth of these CAFRs have we I done? I think at least through 20, Probably starting like in 2016, if not before that. Yeah. I mean, we have annual it's reports. I've been here. Yeah, started. yeah we, we have annual reports that go back further than that online, but I right. think it was 2015 or 2016 that we started doing a more comprehensive and formal. Okay. Got it. And have we ever received anything other than an, uh, a clean opinion? No. no. Those were my questions. Okay. It sounds like they were answered here. Thank you. Mark? Okay. Um, I think this is more to the staff. Um, we've got... Uh, almost 600,000 in um, investment income that we generated this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, where's that coming from? That's, um, a, that's a great question, uh, Director, or we, uh, or President Mark. So uh, so the, the reason behind that the increase was uh, the market is up. Um, in 2023 compared to 2022. And uh, most of these are the unrealized loss on your investments. And I believe uh, what happened was um, Kendra, I think with yeah, to the board, you had made it, you, you, you shifted some of your monies to investments. And uh, with that said, that earned an unrealized gain on your investment as of a year end. I believe it was higher interest. Yeah, it was the higher yeah, interest. interest. Higher interest safe. Yeah. Um, yes. change in money, the was, money was taken from the county pool, which right. was at a very low interest yeah. rate and invested in government. Uh, higher, higher I, higher thought we did, I thought we did that in about the uh, June time frame or uh, July which, time frame, which shows how much more we might have made if we had done that sooner. And this report goes through June thirtieth. So, uh, yeah, okay. Well, no, we we excuse me. I should go raise my hand. Oh, go ahead. We yeah. make we make interest mm -hmm. uh, because because we have these loan mm -hmm. funds right. which we have not dispersed in paying for capital projects that have been mm -hmm. um, delayed yeah. because of COVID and other things. Um, so that we get interest money on that, no matter where it is, whether it's with LAIF or the county or in CDs or whatever. So there's an interest income that we get. And that is separate from, a, that's totally separate from the issue of us taking some of the money out of the county and putting it in uh, treasuries. Jonathan, I think Jonathan can explain a little bit bit better there's okay. a fair there's an annual fair market adjustment that is done and i believe that that's what jonathan was was trying to say that was causing a lot of the increase jonathan am i right yes uh, let me explain to you so i have the uh i pulled out the uh, working trial balance of the district so the uh, seven hundred three thousand dollars um that is part of the investment return consisted of uh, interest in investments of uh, $443,000. 
um, you have an interest um, dividend from your T bills of uh, forty seven thousand dollars. And uh, you have an unrealized gain on the fair market value of the investment wow. of two hundred thirteen thousand dollars. Got it. Okay. Okay. That, that, that makes, is a gas. That yeah, that is that is an accounting standard requirement, and yeah. sometimes your interest, your interest revenue, or your, excuse me, your investment earnings will look like you received a decrease, but it's not a realized loss. In this case, this year most agencies received a gain because of that 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 accounting standard or fair market value adjustment. Yeah, well said, Heather. So 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 um the unrealized gain or loss works like a paper gain or loss. So until you sell that investment, that's the time that you will realize that gain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a, a comment on page nine, where it lists the directors. Uh, we're all now elected as of uh, uh, November. This, this well, November, actually yeah. December when we took office. Yes. So if you could change that. And uh, there was only one president last year, not the two that are shown here. So if you can make that change also. Um, on page 20, I see the very clear statement that's asking the question. Uh, the mission is that this audit was trying to, is the district better off or worse off as a result of this year's activities? Um, and I see that as a very clear question that the audit poses, but then I look for the answer. It's not there. So if we're going if you're going to ask a question like that, there should be a, I feel, a corresponding, and here's what we conclude. So can you address that? John, do you want to take that one or do you want me to take that one? Uh, on one, of the, one of the two, you either Heather or Jonathan. Yes. So I will have Heather uh, do his uh, comments first, and I will, uh, uh, yeah, next. In my opinion, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually refer to my report. Is as in, let's see, where is it? Net position increased by seven percent. So in my, in my opinion, the district is better off this year than they were last year. That's so that is okay. my, my opinion to answer to your question. For there, <laughs> yeah. Point of order. Okay, so yeah, okay, so Heather, uh, uh, so I second your uh, thought process. So you're correct that the the district is better off this year compared to last year, especially when um, 2023 uh, you have a state mandate or state mandated drought. So had uh, the state did not post any uh, state uh, mandated drought, you would have earned more revenues in 2023 than uh, last year. Okay. Um, okay. Hold for a second, Brian, you had... I just, point of order is yes. just please, when staff is answering the question, please allow them to finish answering okay. before interrupting. It's yes. just the common courtesy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and on page 88, uh, where we refer to the pension liabilities, I'm not sure if you addressed this already. Um, I see from 2018 to 2021, pension liabilities are in the 4 million plus uh, number. 22, it drops down significantly. Um, and then 2023, 20, it comes up somewhat. Uh, what's the reason for the significant drop in that? Uh, so Mark, uh, to answer your, uh, the director Smalley. So to answer your question, so the reason behind uh, the jump in uh, net pension liability was the uh, 
because the uh, CalPERS calculation for this year was based off the uh, measurement date of uh, 2022. So, you know, in 2022, which was last year, um, it was a bear market. And uh, so CalPERS as a whole, they have incurred $1.5 billion in investment loss. So this is like your proportionate share in that uh, investment loss incurred by the entire CalPERS pool, which consists of uh, several members. Okay. Yeah. All right, understood, thank you. Okay, that's all my questions. Um, you had, yeah. Since we're all, since we're going to do it, I'll just go ahead and go. Um, yeah, I had the same um, question about the uh, pensions, uh, Mark, that you did. Uh, if you look at the what I consider to be the real number, because I think Calpers six point nine, I noticed they're starting to drop their discount rate, but that is still wildly optimistic given historical trends. You look more at the five point nine one. That's eight point five million dollars. But given that it's gone up and down like that, I think our structural deficit is probably somewhere in the two to three million, um, which we're not really addressing in any way. And we do pay a seven percent tax every year um, on our. Unre I mean, it's. A I mean, they're effectively up until this last year, they were effectively loan sharking us because we're um, we're paying their hurdle rate for investments, even though no one is getting anywhere close to that over a period of time. Mm -hmm. So until we address the structural deficit that we have in our pension fund, we're, we're gonna see these swings as the market uh, changes. Um, I did wanna say though, on the good news side that we only have, and the, uh, and the Felton people have only four more years of payments on their, um, on their acquisition of the system. So the, the glide path is, is definitely coming in and uh, we will see that shortly. Um, I, I did have a question about the net position. I think this might go to staff. Um, when we talk about the increase in net position, I, I think if I look at page uh, 60 in the agenda, I think it's 44 in the report, um, I see that the net position includes items that are either non-spendable materials and supplies, and that's certainly good. Um, but there is also this assessment reserve fund, and I I just had a question about what that was. What page, Bob? Uh, it's sixty in the agenda and forty-four in the report. Thank you, Jonathan. Are you are you um, able to answer that question? would be only guessing if you'd well, like I'm me guessing. to, I, I'd rather not guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand that. And perhaps it might be something that's accrued for a payment that's going to be made. I, you know, reserve funds like that typically, I don't view in my head as unrestricted, even though from an accounting point of view, they may be. Yeah. Um, so, so Bob, which one of these numbers was, were you looking at again? The uh, assessment reserve fund. Okay, thank you. So anyway, if you net those out, um, the actual cash that is spendable net, and this gets to my next point, um, actually went down um, by half million, it looks like. I mean, I'm just looking at the line, spendable net position. And this sort of gets to where I think there's another section that needs to be added, perhaps in the statistical section, around our reserve position. Um, particularly in light of a discussion we had a, a few meetings back around using loan money as reserves. Um, really reserves are things you can spend on whatever it is that you want as a district. Uh, we have a reserve policy. And I think there needs to be a section in the reports that shows what our reserve policy targets are based on uh, current, as of June 30th, based on current, and what our um, position is on each one of those uh, reserve funds. Uh, I think that would be a very helpful thing to do because 
if you look at that, we are wildly underfunded on our reserve position. And so while I appreciate the fact that our net position is going up from an accounting point of view, I caution people that, you know, accounting and reality aren't necessarily the same for the purposes of what you can do with that money. Mm -hmm. um, and the net position is a, a number that gives you sort of an accounting view. I look for cash and what our position is relative to infrastructure improvements to determine and, and what our operating expenses are doing to determine whether or not we are better off or worse off. Again, it gets back to your definition. So from a strict accounting point of view, I'll agree we're better off from an actual cash um, meeting our infrastructure requirements and holding expenses down, growth and, exp and expenses down, I don't believe we're better off. Doesn't mean I won't vote for the report, but just it's a different perspective. Um, last thing I wanted to mention, sorry, I'm still trying to navigate these things. Um, Scott, I, Scott had his hand up first. Oh, sorry. wants to reply. Okay, so sorry. I finally uh, found the, uh, the uh, yeah the assessment reserve fund. So those are your uh, yeah because on your cash um, accounts you okay. have two accounts, one for the uh, Long Pico assessment and, okay. and one for the Olympia assessment, which are I believe uh, it was all um, these are these are these accounts are designated for those uh, purposes only. So that's why it's called uh, spendable only for that purpose it, it's not un, it's not unrestricted in that sense then even though no, it's, it's, under, it's it's under the unrestricted se section it looks like yes it's under the unrestricted section but, but uh it's only can be used for the uh, towards the assessment reserve fund yeah yeah because, yeah mm -hmm. that sounds like restricted to me well, I, I mean, again, it's accounting versus, yeah. you know, what it is you do in a day-to-day -day operational point of view. Yeah, yeah we do not want to spend, certainly the Olympia money needs to go to pay the Olympia loan. The assessment district has been, quote, spent. What does that mean from the fact that they're still contributing money or not? They're still right. debt payments. Yeah, they're still debt payments. And so that money actually... <clears throat> probably goes into a capital fund or something. Anyway, I um, also wanted to talk a little bit about the population numbers. Um, so I, I'm a little concerned about the population numbers that we put in here because I think they also are used for calculating what our position is relative to water usage on a per person per day basis. Uh, the number that's in here, I think is about 19. Page. Oh, sorry, sorry uh, 66. In the report, 89 in the agenda. So, um, you know, one of the best ways, I think, to figure this out is to actually use the, not so much a calculation, but <clears throat> a combination of um, registered voters. And the fact that our county is pretty high, it's 92% on average, if we assume that, uh, plus the number of students that are in um, uh, the San Lorenzo Valley Unified School District and a portion of those in Scotts Valley, the number gets up closer to 22,000. Um, and that has a, a pretty big impact on what our um, number is for calculating uh, where our customers are relative to conservation, because I think they're doing an outstanding job, and particularly so if you use 22,000 rather than, you know, 19.5. Um, I'd like us to take a closer look at coming up with a real number that we can all agree on uh, when it comes to this, because the numbers, I've seen numbers sort of all over the place, depending on on the report. And I think we need to get to a unified number that we can agree on and a methodology for calculating it. Uh, again, won't affect this report, but I wanna make sure we're giving people a, a good uh, picture. Um, I also wanna point out that um, our water produced and water sold numbers are 
uh, interesting. Um, we're running up at about a 38% loss. I was going to ask about that. Um, now, I'm assuming some of that's due to, you know, the fact that we do flushing and, and we didn't used to do that in the days gone by. But that is a enormous number. Um, and it, it jumped quite a bit from the last few years. Um, it's also troubling from the point of view of I, we just had a leak adjustment um, or excuse me, a, a leak report done. So I'm wondering maybe if we caught all the leaks um, or if there's some other thing that's driving that kind of a number. I also want to point out that from the peak number on this table in 2014, we're down 32% on water sold. So that means that, that the capacity that we have today, the infrastructure, treatment plants, storage tanks, water lines, everything that goes into the cost structure for rates is carrying 32% less water than it did 10 years ago. If you wanna use water produced, it's carrying 17% less. Um, that is a extraordinary number. Um, I think it goes a long way to pointing out how much uh, our customers are saving. But I think it also shows, if you look at the percent loss, we're actually, the district itself is one of the biggest offenders of that relative to the state of our infrastructure. And that's another reason why we need to really be focused on that. Um, I think Which that- page are you on there, Bob? Oh, on the- uh, 82 of the agenda, 59 of the yeah. report. Yeah. So this is one reason why I think this statistical section is just absolutely fabulous because it gives us a historical view of um, a lot of really key metrics in the, um, in the district, things that from an operational point of view are much more important. Um, the financials, as Jamie says, we've never had an unclean opinion. It's always been clean. Mm -hmm. I'm never worried about it from an accounting point of view. But these numbers are where I really focus a lot of attention because they go to the heart of how we're operating and managing the district. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks. If I could ask uh, a follow-up. Yes, please, Mark. Um, since Bob mentioned the water loss, I did have that noted here also. Uh, Brian, last year we had asked uh, our previous general manager for a water audit. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we never saw that. Uh, is that something that you and staff could take on and bring to the board at some point this year so that we could understand better where in this 38% water loss is so that we have some idea, you know, how, how much do you guess this tanks? How much do you guess is this? Sir? Okay. Yeah. Good. Which page are we looking on on this report where we're talking about water losses? 82 in 82 in the blue letter, blue numbers. Yeah. Uh, is the, uh, last 10 fiscal years for water sales, water produced. Mm -hmm. So. And but, you're asking for a detail of basically this table for. Um, Rick had described a water audit. I don't know what's in a water <laughs> audit. I mean, it could even be as simple as 30% of it goes to flushing and 10% to yeah. um, yeah. unproductive it, it uses. Could, it could be whatever, pretty basic, right? Yeah. right. But, but we, don't, we don't know. We, we could have also lost a fair amount in broken pipes from floods. Right. Because we had, had some pretty Absolutely. bad weather last Absolutely. year. Absolutely. But it sounded like between Rick and James, they had an idea of, you know, what the, what the causes are for this loss. And it sounded like it was something that, you know, given some effort they could put together, but we never saw it. Okay. So, okay. No problem. Thanks. Okay. So the question on the table is, do we accept this report as is? Do we ask them to go back and correct some of these things we've brought up uh, and accept it at a later meeting? Um, or can we accept it with specific changes? Yeah. 
think no. that's good. yes. No. Okay, so let's. Can I make a motion? Yes, please. I was going to <laughs> modify the existing motion. Okay. I move that we accept the um, uh, audit report with the following change that the reference under conditions affecting financial position to Boulder Creek fire be changed to CZU fire and that an additional item referring to the approximately $5 million in damages caused by the winter storms of 2022-23 uh, as also an additional item under that. Is that sufficient or? I mean, we talked about a number of things here. Um, I think that was an inaccuracy that has to be yes. fixed. Okay. Some of these other the, things. The rest are... of these are for future yes. consideration, okay. I think. Yes. Okay. I will second that motion. Holly, can you put a word? Oh, you need yes. to go out to the public. Excuse me? You need yes. to go out to the public. That's right. Um, well, not before a motion. You can have a motion. And then but, yeah, we have a motion. You're about ready to take a vote. Yeah, we have a motion. Um, are there any comments from the public uh, regarding this motion? Okay, seeing none. I'll second that motion. Okay. Director May have made. Seeing none, I think we can proceed to uh, a vote. President I... Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Thank you. Motion to carry. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, thank you so much for having me tonight, and uh, Happy New Year to all, and uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Next item on the agenda is the Alta Via Pipeline Replacement Project contract change orders. Would staff care to uh, present that and uh, give us the details? Yes. So this will this item will be presented by uh, Garrett. And you can walk us through it. Yeah, so staff is recommending approval of three change orders. Two of the change orders are for work that's already been completed. And then the third change order is for work that we need to complete for a Caltrans project. Um, I could read the memo or answer questions. Yep. Uh, could you just, uh, you know, we, we discussed this project and the um, talking about the Mona uh, Way soldier wall and we voted against against doing that. So can you just explain to me how these things, two things kind of go together? Sure. That? Yeah. So the culvert repair was at the location of the retaining wall and the temporary bridge installation is at the location of the retaining wall. But not the permanent solution. It's not a permanent solution. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. So that's still, I guess what I'm asking is, was the last time we discussed this, we sort of said, go away, think about it again, come back with another solution. But it sounds like we still don't have a solution yet. Is that or? That's a different uh, option. And that's not on the memo here. That item's not, that's not being discussed. That's not a change order item. I understand that. But okay. Thank you. Any other, Bob? Yes, I have questions also. <laughs> I, I think these are pretty, I mean, uh, I, I'll get to a procedural one later. This The, the two of these actually look pretty minimal. Um, but the third one, I wanted to make sure I understood that. That wasn't part of the Altavia project to start, right? That was, they were already there right across the street rather than go to bid for a project that came up in the middle of what they were doing, we said, hey, why don't you just go over here and do this? Is that correct? Uh, so they are actually abandoning the old Alta Via line that goes up from Highway 9, and it's at the same location. Well, but but the projects aren't related, right? I, I thought that 
this the word I site. thought this vi the Caltrans Viaduct project the three hundred and two thousand dollars was for something that was completely separate from the Altavia work. The only connection is the location, and there's work for the Altavia line to abandon the existing line, the lateral that comes off the main and Highway Nine. So that is part of this project. Did did we not specify that in the original? I mean, that's a, that's a big change order. It is. Right. And it sounds like, is that due to the fact that we missed something in the original bid? Um, we actually have money allocated for this relocation, and, but it was not included in the plans. Was was that because it wasn't part, or part of what the Altavia project was originally envisioned to be? Or was it all supposed to be part of the same project? Um, I don't have the background on why Josh <laughs> made the project as a change order, as an add to Altavia. And and the, how do how did we come up with three hundred two thousand three hundred forty seven dollars? And has this already been spent, by the way? Or so we... this one hasn't been spent, but this is the price from the contractor. Okay. So maybe let me take a stab at answering this. My understanding is this, this is related to the project because it's the same pipeline, et cetera, that we're dealing with that we are under contract with. It was not in the contract documents. But Caltrans came along after the fact and said, hey, we need you to relocate your line. We have the contractor there. It's related enough to the project that I could see it's like, okay, yes, we could actually justify this as a change order under the same project, rather than inventing a new project and going out to bid and going through all that. Whereas it's related enough and within the scope of work enough that we could say, yes, we could do it under a change order with the le le less staff lift, less lift all around. If, if Caltrans hadn't come and said, hey, you got to move the pipe, would we be doing this work? Probably not, no. Okay, good. That, that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. Yeah, so so, let, me, let me also ask, answer uh, Gail's question, because um, just we are going to revisit the other item that you mentioned, the retaining wall, but we're still noodling on that one. Okay. And we still that's wanna, all I wanted to know. <laughs> so, it's just, so it's not in this, and it's not implied in this at all. These ones are standing on their own, but we are going to look at that one and bring something back to you that's been retooled. Okay. So just a couple of quick follow-ons then. So this is their effective bid for this. We because it can be considered a change order, we don't have to go out for uh, bids and that sort of thing and create a new project for it. That's basically what you're saying, Correct. right? Okay. When it comes to accounting for the Alta Via um, pipeline project in terms of the amount of money that was spent on it, can this be put into a separate category for the Caltrans viaduct relocation as opposed to Alta Via? I'm sure we can separate it somehow, and I'm sure we will because it's, um, yeah, we can certainly separate it. Yeah, from the point of view of looking at, you know, what the original bid was and, and what this is. I also wanted to add, we did vote on about $90,000 worth of change orders before. So where does this 2.2 million, um, was that the original bid? No. No. 2.2 is the original bid plus 92,000. The original bid is uh, $2,107,470. Okay, so it's the original bid plus the 92,000. Yes. Okay, and then with this, we get up to about a half million dollars more than the original bid, more or less. Okay. Yes. Great, thanks. No problem. Mm -hmm. So to Pardon. follow on Bob's question, uh, is this work in Highway 9 what you had characterized before as the emergency work that Caltrans was asking to have done? This is a separate issue. Oh, hey. So this is not that emergency work that we were talking about. It's the beginning of November timeframe. Is that correct? Okay. So is this 302,000 that emergency project that Caltrans was coming to us for. And we said, time up, you can't do this. 
No. Okay, so this is different than that. Yes. We're still working on a design for that emergency work. Uh, we need to get bids for the emergency work. Okay. All right. So this is a completely separate. I, I did have one follow up on that. Though. Sure, please. Are these in lo roughly the same location? That is, is this work that we're proposing here going to impact the emergency work that Caltran wants done? No, it's the opposite side of the Altavia project. So down by Brookdale. Down by Clear Creek. Yeah, yeah okay. Exactly. Right. Thanks. Okay. okay. All right. Um, and related to that portion of the change order, uh, the contractors excluding inspections, testing permits. Are we going to see another change order for those, or is Caltrans covering the inspection permits because we're in Highway Nine? We will have inspection fees from our construction management consultant. Okay, and permits. Permits. We have an encroachment permit from Caltrans. Okay, so yeah. we're covered on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then back to Gail's part of the question on this uh, change order for the temporary bid. Um, is the fact that this temporary stuff that's in there now, is that potentially part of a solution in addition to a retaining wall? I don't need the answer now, but then the question that I want to ask, do we buy the transplates instead of renting them if we're going to leave them there? And can we do this with the size of a retaining wall if it's working now how long can we continue to make it work as a bridge across there so okay okay that's all the questions comments i have on that i have only one question how much if any of this is reimbursable by fema or other government agencies so the project is uh, FEMA, we're getting reimbursed by FEMA. Okay. So we'll submit all the billing to them. Okay. For okay. Bob? I think five and seven might be um, good, but is the, right. is, is number eight related at all to any disaster? I wouldn't think so. It's... I mean, is, is Caltrans... Caltrans doing is building the biotech because of disaster. Because of the disaster. Yes. Okay. So if they have to build because of the disaster, then and they okay. need us to I, do something. I, I, I would say there's say this too loud. Yeah. <laughs> I would say there's risk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Any other questions? No. Uh, members of the public, do any of you have questions regarding this change order? I do not see any hands up. Uh, okay. So I'll make the motion that the board approved the contract change orders five, seven, and eight for payment to Anderson Pacific construction for the Alta Via pipeline replacement in the sum of uh, $333,851 to the not in not to exceed contract amount from two point. Uh, two million two hundred thousand one and two hundred and thirteen dollars to two million five hundred thirty five thousand and sixty four dollars. Period. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Ali, will you call the vote? President Hill. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you all. Okay, the next item on the agenda is board committee assignments for 2024. And I can find that here. I will present that myself. Page 140. Page what? 140. 140. Or actually 139. 139, yes. Okay. So I did not receive uh, any significant number of uh, requests. And how many requests did you receive? 
So, plus yourself. Plus myself. Did we is, is did we get a okay that that's a from a Brown Act point of view okay to do? I believe so. Yes. Didn't I didn't. Okay, okay. So, I'd like to follow up on that a little bit later then. Okay. Because I didn't get an answer whether or not I would have submitted something, but I didn't get an answer whether or not that communication directly from us as directors to you, yes. uh, as opposed to just talking about it here in the board meeting, was a violation of the Brown Act or not. Okay, I don't have that off the top of my head. I could maybe offer a suggestion is next time is this director answers to the board secretary please I'm, I'm sorry next time just direct your answers to the board secretary yes and okay avoid, avoid the issue i thought that's what we did yeah. well the, the request came through her but oh. it was ambiguous as to whether they should get back to me or her okay so it was ambiguous in that in that regard um, so the question is, um, we do have to have committees set. Do we wish to proceed with this or do we have questions, comments? I don't have any comments on it. Okay. Um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't make an adjustment to a committee in the future if we had to. Bob? Yeah, I just want to make a meta comment about committee assignments. Uh, historically, in the past, um, there has been a, um, a general rotation of committee assignments. Mm -hmm. That is where, where people would, in, in order to get a better feel for all aspects of the uh, district and its operations that that board members would move through committee assignments. In, in the last few years, we seem to have just gotten folks locked in to a particular committee assignment, and that's where they are. Um, I, I, I understand there's expertise that folks have in particular areas or expertise that people believe they have. But I think it would be worthwhile for us to consider going back to a rotation where people actually do different things in the course of the year uh, as part of their committee assignments. So, uh, so that in the rotating within the year? Well, or? not necessarily within the year, but for the four year term, that they're not in the same committee yeah. for four years. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a, a better service to the district better visibility for the uh, board members. Um, and it, I think it's something that we ought to consider uh, doing. Uh, I mean, basically what, um, what I see here is pretty much, um, there, there's a lot of locking in over a course of multiple years. So that's my, that's again, my historical, you know, meta comment about, about this. I also want to mention that the motion also needs to include what the committee size is. Right. So. Okay. So let's see here. Where am I? Jeff, would you like me to make a motion? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I move that um, we appoint Director Ackman and Fultz as the board representatives on the administration committee and that that committee size be set at three. That um, Directors Mayhood and Hill be appointed to budget and finance and that that committee size be set to four. And that engineering and environment is Directors Smalley and Hill and that that committee size is set to four. And that the representatives to Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency are directors Mayhood and Smalley with director Ackman as the alternate. So I have a second. I'll second that. Okay. Do we have any further discussion among the board on that? 
Do we have any comments from the public on those assignments? I do not see any hands up. So Holly, will you take the vote? President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Could I... Just to follow up, Holly, what, what's the plan in terms of arranging for the first meetings or, you know, tomorrow what... I will be sending out an email to each of the committees, every person that's on it, asking them if they are available for, I'll put out some specific dates. And um, then once those, uh, once each committee has a date and a, each person can attend, they will then uh, meet and decide on their uh, monthly meeting time and go over those sorts of things. So we want to do that in January if we can. So, so the first possible. meeting would be in January? Hopefully, yeah. yes. That's, that, that, I, that's why I asked is because we've got the outreach for Prop 218 and, and that hearing. And so I, I would hope that tomorrow. the admin and budget finance meet before. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so we are, have finished the active items on the agenda. We have the um, consent items to consider next. Thank you, Scott. Um, I understand, Bob, you had some. Yeah, I'll be uh, pulling A and B off of that. Uh, C, I will not pull because we got an updated um, uh, agenda, which had the um, mm -hmm. agreement. I was reluctant to Bob, have it pass through. That, please? I can't hear what you're Sorry. saying. Sorry. Um, pulling the um, Redwood Park Pipeline Replacement Project and Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project from the um, consent agenda. I did have one question about the long line agreement. Then you have to pull it. Okay, even if I have a question yeah. about it? No, oh, sorry, just because- pull, Just pull it. Yeah, all right, we'll do that then. Okay. Okay, so um, I do not know the process at That's this so point. So you don't have to vote on the rest, so now you just- Yeah, the rest we don't have to vote on. Yeah. So now we just- And we'll have to bring these sequentially, back. Sequentially, now you just go through the three that Bob pulled. Okay. Actually, if I may. Um, I believe you vote on the remaining consent item as one. Yes. Item. No, no, we do not. That's not our practice. It's a, it's a consent item and you don't have to vote. Nobody objects. Um, actually, Hi. I found out that that's what we have been, we are supposed to be doing. That's why we could put a resolution in a consent okay. item. So you because want to change we are actually voting practice. on it. Okay. That was my question. Okay. Okay, so now you have the answer. <laughs> now I have the answer. Okay. We do need to vote on the rest of the items on the consent agenda. But we don't have to vote on it individually. No, no just as as the consent agenda items 11E, 11F, and 11G are um, going can to be voted can I, approved. Can I, with, can I withdraw my uh, okay. polling a C with that answer? Can I just clarify what you're saying we need to do. So in other words, do do we just simply approve the consent agenda in its entirety, except for the things that were pulled? Exactly. Okay. Right. All right, so that's what you do now, Jeff. So oh, point uh, of order. Yes. Can I pull my, can I withdraw my <laughs> pulling of item C from the consent agenda? I have no issue with that. Yeah. I don't think anybody has an issue with that. Barbara's nodding the whole time here. So, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Barbara's nodding the whole time. So, yes. yes. Okay. So, um, can we get a motion to accept the consent agenda minus, minus the two items that Bob has pulled? I move we uh, approve the consent agenda. Point of, point of order, sorry. Do we need to ask the public for their input uh, on this as well? Are there any public comments on this subject? Specifically on the items that haven't been pulled from the consent agenda, right? On the items that have not been pulled from the consent agenda. Seeing none, we'll now move forward with the motion. I'll second it. 
Second. Holly, call the roll. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Fulls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Too much paper. Redwood, Redwood Tank, Redwood Park. I'm sorry? Redwood Park. That's what we're going to do. I can't hear you. Redwood Park is the first one. Up. Okay. <sighs> Would staff care to uh, give us? Well, I, 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 I just, I just have a question. We don't need to go through a lot if we, if we don't want to. I just have a quick question on the um, service connection transfers that were done. Um, okay. The, the three uh, connections. Yeah. Um, that seems like a lot of money for three connections. Yeah. And so I'm kind of wondering why it's so much money for the three connections. I mean, did they have to trench 100 feet? Did they have to do a lot of extra work? What, what, what was driving that? I mean, those, those are gold, uh, platinum, <laughs> titanium connections. It's my understanding that the connections were made and the pressure was off. And then they had to go back in, dig it all up, and connect it to the other main because the two mains were installed in the same trench. And unfortunately, the price was twenty-four thousand two hundred dollars, and the change order was agreed to and signed by Josh and by Rick. And that's the so, information I have on it. So this has already been agreed to. Right? So, and they literally had, so they, they, they made the connection, they covered it up, and then they had to dig it back up. And, okay, yes. all right, well then, yes. I guess that makes a little more sense. I was sitting there going, I can't understand why there's, uh, this costs so much. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll cover procedural item in the next one, but we can, I, I'm, I, that was my only question on, on that one. Okay, so um, any other comments on that one? What was, wasn't there a second one? Oh, um, I thought, um, yes, I have questions about Fall Creek. Yeah. But we could vote on this first and then. Does anyone in the public have any comments on the Redwood Park Pipeline Project contract change order in the amount of $24,000? And twenty-four thousand two hundred dollars. Sixty-two. Yeah, that's 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 change order number one. There's change order number two okay. for the big uh, quantity items. Okay. So, yeah. So the motion is for both, though, right? Correct. The motion. Can I read the motion? Yes, Press any key to continue this conference. I move that the board approve contract change orders one and two for payment to Easy Construction Inc. for the Redwood Park Pipeline Replacement Project in the sum of 62900 increasing the not to exceed contract amount from 504 to 601 to 610-5501. Second. I'll second that. Any further discussion from the board? Any discussion or comments from the public? Oh. Holly, call a vote. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Now, moving on to the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project. Would yes. Staff care to. Uh, I, again, I just have some questions. I don't need to go through the whole thing. Um, have the change order four and five already been agreed to by the district? The change orders four and five were negotiated by staff and we are recommending that we approve it. It hasn't been approved by the district. And the other three change orders, are they um, 
I mean, there are a couple of credits, I think, but yeah. So change order one is actually been signed by Rick and by uh, the engineer of record and by the contractor. Mm -hmm. um, but the change orders two through five have not been signed. Okay. Is it, is it the policy that if it's under 30,000 that on the change order that Rick goes ahead and signs it, has that been what we followed in the past? I'll answer that. My understanding is perhaps that's was Rick's interpretation that if that the change order was under thirty thousand, my interpretation is is once you have this out and it's above thirty thousand and it's gone to the board, if it's a nickel more, is it has to come back to the board unless you've given us some unless there was a contingency baked in there where you gave me you gave me ten percent above that, then I would have the ability to sign administratively for another three thousand dollars on top of the thirty thousand dollars, or whatever whatever the contract amount is. So in this case, I've in instructed Garrett. In fact, we came up with the spoiler play by going with finance, and everything is sort of streamlined now, so that we can handle these a little more quickly and Teflon coated administratively, but make sure that they are in fact correct. So. If we had a contingency built in there, then I have a, an ability to sign up to that amount administratively. If we go over that or we didn't have a contingency, we have to bring it back to the board. Well, I would recommend to the board that we examine that as part of the purchasing mm -hmm. policy, which <laughs> is an uh, admin committee thing. Um, I don't, I, because I, I, I think there is some flexibility <laughs> absolutely need to have it shouldn't be a nickel brian it, it, it there, there should be some flex there in my opinion um in terms of how the these numbers were arrived at the forty-eight thousand and eighty-four thousand, was that a they came to us with you know twice that amount and you had a quarter of that amount and you agreed i mean was there a negotiation or did they present um time cards and the contract that said this is what our overage charges are uh, for this work, um, you owe us this amount of money. They submit pricing that they feel is fair. And the district, we look at the plans and try and find contract work that they're trying to bill us for as a change. And we negotiate till we get the price. So, so all parties agree on. Yeah, I mean, as a consultant myself, change you love change orders because that's where you make um, a ton of money, typically. Um, I, I think I think another thing that we might want to consider as a board is how we approach this these contracts. I'm not sure that we actually see the construction contracts, whether or not they include items like, you know, district ability to inspect the products that come in to make sure they're not coming from places they shouldn't be coming, whether it includes overage charges, whether it includes them having to do time cards to keep track of what their overage is or whether we're just saying, come to us with a number and you know we'll negotiate it. But we've seen a ton of overages uh, over the last year, year and a half. I expect some overages. Some of them are a little bit more than I expect. Um, and I'd like to make sure we have a handle here on how we're managing overages going forward. I, I can't hold you for stuff that, you know, we're accountable for stuff that happened in the past. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going there. Right. Yeah. Right. But, Please don't. <laughs> yeah, right. but going forward, we ought to figure out how we get our hands around these overages so that we're not dinged quite as much as I think we've been seeing. Agreed. I think we should have projects with no change orders. That would be ideal. Well, well, your lips to God's ears, but the world doesn't work that way. <laughs> if I may, it's, I mean, change orders are a pretty much, I mean, we didn't invent the term change order at the district. No, no. Certainly Garrett and I didn't just cook this up over the last week or so before we put this together. I mean, change orders are around and they are a, a bona fide mechanism for executing a contract. And I may reframe that as they're not necessarily an overage. They're just a matter of it's an adjustment to work that actually unveiled itself as the project goes. Anybody that's mm -hmm. modeled a kitchen or a bathroom or even your back deck knows exactly as soon as you start pulling nails, you find out what's underneath and usually it exposes additional work. 
or the contract is structured in a way that you've got quantity items you have to take care of. Admittedly, contractors, you typically charge a buck 50 on the dollar for a change order and credit you back 50 cents on the dollar for something that they, that they didn't do. This And it is for us to try to muscle them as much as we can. Sometimes we have that ability to flex our muscles and other times we don't. And that's the simple, unfortunate reality. Yeah, I understand all that, Brian. I'm not asking for zero change orders. I don't think that's um, that's re realistic. And it could be in the case of change order five in this one, the bedrock elevation, that because we're dealing with the creek, we didn't have any ability to drill down to where bedrock was as part of the pre-construction testing, um, since bedrock was obviously a, a key part of this. Um, this is more of a general thing. We've just been seeing a lot that they... It's not really clear how they've been managed, how the contractor charges for it, what the arrangements are in the contract to deal with it. It's something I think we ought to take a look at because we have tens of millions of dollars of uh, construction we're gonna need to do over the next few years. So that's, that's my- Okay, um, I wanted to comment on this also. Uh, change orders four and five are for conditions, unknown conditions. Um, we couldn't, uh, quantify in the bid documents uh, what these conditions were like prior to going out there. That's that's common, as Brian is pointing out. Uh, you don't know what the conditions are like behind the drywall in the house until you take the drywall off. So that's both of what these are. Um, so I feel that the contractor coming back for these is valid. Now, the price is something that's negotiated. To a point that Bob was making, um, did we did we review what they were submitting to us, and they were asking for 60,000. We came in with 25, and we got to a, a number somewhere in the middle. I hope that that's what happened, uh, but going forward, is it appropriate to reflect some of that in the memo? Is a question that I wanted to ask Brian. Is it appropriate, uh, contractor originally asked for this, uh, we ended up at this based on discussions and negotiations. Because in the work that I've done previously, that's often what I did for a client was to show, here's what, the, here's what we got to eventually. Here's what the contractor was asking for initially. Here's what I negotiated them to. Here's what I recommend we agree on. I guess, you know, in certain cases, it may be appropriate. I right. know. It, it really depends, but often putting these reports together, we're trying to also just distill it down to where the dust settled. Right. I, I mean, there are instances where, I mean, contract change orders, they are, they are a challenge. And certainly, you know, sometimes what you do is you try to do maybe a schedule of values before you start a job. For, for instance, if you're pouring concrete, you have a pretty good idea of what poured concrete costs and right. et cetera. And so when you go over on quantity, but. And we have used the schedule of values in one of the other change orders that we saw uh, for the Redwood tanks uh, where you adjusted the, based on the quantities. So yeah. we specified the quantities and the, Contractor so those gave us ones their price and dry. I know Garrett brought yeah. me a whole list of ones that he said he flat out rejected. Mm -hmm. And so, and I support him when he can, you know, when we can justify tell us that. Can you tell us? Yeah, that? Really that, exactly. that gives us the sense of. Sure. You know, like hey. I said, it's, you know, for us, it's like we're also in the throes of trying to get projects done. Right. So the primary goal right now is to actually spend money. <laughs> Um, honestly, <laughs> spend that borrowed yeah. money. So that, yeah. well, it's like we're paying we're paying interest on money that's just sitting there, and, and yes. if we're not getting it yes. spent, and the other one is just, I'm also saying when I say spend money is also we have free money that we need to get moving on projects in order to make sure yeah. that we don't lose that free money, yeah. meaning grants or FEMA or whatever. So often the reporting up, it's like. Yes, if we can, you know, give you the bottom line, it's like, yeah, we tried. And and in, sometimes it is frustrating. I will say that change orders are a frustration for an engineer because sometimes you simply know, you know, they're taking you to the cleaners mm -hmm. and you don't really have much you can do about it. Yeah, agreed. 
It's like me taking my car to the dealership. It's really frustrating. Agree. <laughs> it's a monopoly. I go to George. I, I'm not saying uh, put any undue additional work into something like this. Consider that as something that you might be able to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. For future ones. In other words, yeah, we arm wrestled and. Right. Sure. Yeah. For the ones that are uh, $2,000 and we requested this work ahead of time, anyhow, <clears throat> no. For the ones that they're giving us uh, their daily work tickets with hours and vehicles, no. And that's, but for these of the unknown conditions. <laughs> well, that, and again, yeah. that is an option is to go to a TNM, but TNM can be very risky. And those can go sideways I, I, too. I don't I don't advocate for the time and materials. Well, sometimes in one case we just made a decision to go that way yeah. because we didn't like the lump sum price. Right. And but then I, you have to also then you're burdened uh, to babysit. Uh, and then you have to do your dailies. I want that to be staff's call. Right. I don't you make those kind of decisions. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand we do. And I'm just saying that that's the dilemma. That's yeah. the, the balances that we look at. It's like, oh, well, p &M, yeah, there's an inherent risk with that. Right. Certainly you can monitor and say, see, it only took you five days. See, there's no way you could charge us mm -hmm. 10000 a day because you only had so much equipment there. Right. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so we need a motion to then accept this. I'll make the motion that the board approve the contract change orders um, one through five for payment to uh, Slybon? Siblon. Siblon. Siblon reconstruction for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project in the amount of $123,627, increasing the not to exceed contract from $2,365,000. Seven hundred twenty to two million four hundred eighty nine and thirty three hundred and forty seven dollars. Period. Second. Second. I'll second. That. Have you second? Okay. Any public comment? President Hill. Now, yes. Anybody? Do we have a public? Any public comment on this one? Nope. Have to ask. Uh, go ahead, Holly. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Um, District reports. We have no district reports. Uh, Brian, would you like to take a moment and give us your thoughts on frequency of district reports? Uh, anything on that? Okay, so we discussed this amongst the uh, management group, et cetera. So what we'd like to do is, is I know at one time, I guess we up to now we've been doing monthlies, but we'd like to go back to quarterly reports, from, at least from each of the engineering, environmental, et cetera. I would make a quarterly report, but also make updates as needed. If there's something more urgent that needs to be brought to the attention, but that was that was the consensus amongst um, staff. So you will get a report um, at the next, the next meeting, January 16th. Sorry. January 18th and the April. following one is April 18th, I believe. Yes. That's what we're looking to do. Yes. I'm okay, okay. with that. Uh, I don't see any objection here. Um, I don't think we need to hold a vote on that. Is this staff decision? Yeah. It's, a, it's our decision, yes. Um, written communications. We had an email sent to the board of directors from Big Basin Public Water Initiative um, and a letter from Big Basin Water customers. Um, I think we, at this point, should just acknowledge that we received that. 
do we need to, I mean, they're coming to us with a request. Yes. Do we at least need to agendize it to hear what they have in mind? Um, I'm happy with that. We can agendize it for the next meeting. Uh, we, none of us have had sufficient time to really digest what they're requesting at this point. So, Let's President, if I may just make a suggestion is, um, and Director Holtz, uh, with respect, is in this case, um, the board has made a decision on this, as I know that by putting this letter in our agenda, we've made it public, which allows somebody at the county to also take action on it and follow up with, um, I believe it's um, some sources at the state to try to help and get funding moving for this. My only suggestion really would be to draft a letter for myself and Perhaps you could just look it over that just says, this has been the board's position. We've, what we've decided on this issue. However, we do encourage you to reach out and put pressure on your electeds from the state and feds for funding to help your cause, because that is how you're going to move this along. I mean, in so many words, basically just put that letter and then have it be, you know, a, uh, Anyway, it's a. I, uh, I, I, I follow what you're saying. But then um, it's a concerted, you know, it's it's one consolidated response from all of us that just says that. And I know that there are people working behind the scenes that are, like I said, trying to get funds for this group. And so by having this letter public, because they'd asked me for this letter and I couldn't share it until it became public. And now they can use that as more evidence to try to help their cause. I mean, we did get an email from Eric Upald, Senior Water Resources Control Engineer with the Division of Financial Assistance um, at the State Water Board. I don't know if that's any yeah, we, source of We funds. received some communication. It hasn't fundamentally changed our position, but I think we should acknowledge that we've received the vote. I think... Go ahead, Jamie. Well, I was going to say that I, I think that we're kind of going beyond this isn't an agendized item right yes so we should I, I think that what would probably be appropriate is for you to draft the letter that you're suggesting and then I would uh, leave it to you and and legal counsel to decide whether it's appropriate to bring it back to us in closed session for further discussion mm -hmm. or closed whether session. it would be an open it's not closed session. If, if, no if, it's, justification if, if it's a if it's a letter speaking on behalf of the board then right. it needs to come to the board. Yes. Um, and something like this, I think you would be speaking on behalf of the board. Yes. At least that's my that's position. That's a, well, actually, what I'm suggesting is I'm not to say anything on behalf of the board. It's just to right. say what the board has already. I, already I, in that case, said. then that's fine. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yep. That's, and, that's and, and my suggestion would be is to, to look for funding, to put pressure for funding. And a story, and there are people working on the rest. And uh, the suggestion on looking for funding isn't something that you're suggesting that we, we, or you and staff are going to do. Correct. Make sure that's clear. Yes. Yes. That is, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yes. That's the. But it's just then that it's saying that we've heard them, and right pointing out what the board is already reminding them as, as a director, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm happy to run it by council, um, mm -hmm. but basically I'm just reminding right. them as a director what we've already decided from the board level. Yep, yep. So. Okay, so um, informational material, public committee members 2024. I, I think we've already covered I that. We covered that. that. Yeah. My, my, uh, yes. yeah. Putting the so, numbers. Uh, I that. believe we are done. Do we have a motion to adjourn? You just can declare it That's without right. objection. We are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. We're adjourned at eight eleven p.m. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Oh, and
I just want to do it. I know. <laughs>